Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be diving into how to use Jitsi Meet. It's one of my favorite meeting applications. It's free, open source, all the things we love. And in this tutorial we're just going to show you how to set it up, how to actually use it, whether you are a moderator or just an average meeting attendee. And then finally, in my opinion, most excitingly, uh, we're going to go into how to optimize this for large meetings. Anyways, uh, with that said, let's get started. You're going to create a DigitalOcean account on my affiliate link, which will give you a $200 credits that you can spend over two months, which essentially makes this a free trial. But anyways, after you go through your setup process of creating your account, uh, what you're going to want to do is hit this green button, select droplets, Droplets are the virtual private servers of DigitalOcean. Uh, again, you can use different other VPS systems. I just use DigitalOcean because it's the easiest and I have the most familiarity with. All right, so choose your region, choose whatever you are closest. Um, go down to choose an image, marketplace, uh, and search for Jitsi. And what this is going to do is it's going to create a server automatically uh, so you don't have to log into it. You don't have to uh, do any of the manual setup that you would under a normal um, you know, computer environment. Uh, I always go with regular type SSD, $6 a month option, um, and uh, select all of your keys. Uh, if you don't, again, if you don't have uh, an SSH key, here are some instructions on how you can create your SSH key and enable monitoring. I would, th this is actually very important for Jitsi Meet because uh, this way you can see how much pressure the server is under depending on how many people you have. So you can uh, adjust accordingly. Um, then give it a name. Uh, so let's just call it Jitsi Meet and create droplet. And we're just going to wait for this to set up. Next, need to connect your domain name to your DigitalOcean droplet. And so for that, it's the same thing we did in the last tutorial about setting up your own self-hosted BTC pay server. Um, same thing applies. We're just heading over to advanced DNS. Wait for that to load. Uh, then we're going to create a new record. This is going to be an A record. Host, let's call it a live and then IP address. We're going to take from DigitalOcean, paste that in, boom. All right, uh, now we're gonna wait for some time for the records to update, and then we're gonna, and then we're gonna log into the server. All right, back at the DigitalOcean droplet, we can uh, get more details by heading, clicking the get started uh, icon over there. And this is just gonna give you some basic steps, but we're just gonna walk you through it right now. All right, so first, you're going to SSH into the droplet um, by pulling up your terminal with your favorite nine cat mean, because that, that never dies, uh, and <laughs> SSH into it. So SSH root at an IP address, select yes. Uh, then what we're gonna do is just copy this command and all right, now you're during the installation process, you're gonna see a screen like this, and you're gonna type in the domain that you are connecting to this uh, Jitsi Meet server. So for us, that is live.cryptoconcierge.consulting. Hit okay. All right, so eventually uh, you'll be asked to provide your emails, some places for some Let's Encrypt certificates, but pretty much just follow the prompts they give you and eventually you'll have it installed. Uh, once this happens, uh, you should be ready to go. Once you enter in your information and accept the uh, permissions, you will receive the screen. I am, this is just your, your normal Jitsi screen. You'll probably see your uh, beautiful face smiling back if you have your camera turned on. Um, so I'm just gonna walk through how to use this and some of the settings. For those of you who are just users of Jitsi or if you're a moderator or admin and want to figure out how to 
you know, make meetings. That's what we're gonna go through. So uh, at the bottom bar, you have your microphone where you can mute and unmute your camera. Uh, and this just gives you your option, just like Zoom or any other uh, conferencing application. Uh, then we have the ability to share screens. So we can, uh, you know, share your entire screen window uh, or a Brave tab. Then you have chat function. So first you're gonna have to come up with the nickname, say J, boom, and that's gonna change your profile. And then you can type stuff in. If you're the admin, you can create a poll and let me move it over. There we go. And then you can create, you can ask, you can ask questions and then people can see and respond in the, in the chat. And then there's the option for hand raising. So you can raise your hand and that'll appear for, for the host to see. In addition, this is a kind of neat feature that, that Zoom doesn't have, but each of the emojis have a little sound effect. So that can, that can be used and abused at will. Uh, now for the fun part, this is the participants. And if you are a admin or a mod of a room, this is where you're gonna wanna be, a uh, feature you're gonna be using a lot. Uh, so it just pops open the participants so you can see all the participants. Um, you can add a breakout rooms. Uh, if there was more people, uh, there'd be the option to automatically randomly, oh, I just realized I guess it can't see what I'm, all right, there we go. There'll be a button that you can click that will enable you to randomly disperse participants through the different breakout rooms. And you can mute all, you can, uh, meet people individually, you can kick them, all the, the typical moderator admins uh, more under more actions. Then you can embed meetings, so on a website, people can join through that. You can, uh, we'll get to settings later, you can share audio, share video. So this is a really interesting thing. So you can share a YouTube link and it'll just stream that YouTube video. Uh, it only works for YouTube, it doesn't work for other services like Netflix, so you know, sadly you can't have your own watch party. I mean, you can, you'd have to like share your, your screen and not just straight up video. You can record the meetings, uh, view full screen performance settings. This is another really useful feature. Okay, so if you are in a call with a bunch of other people or maybe you have a bad connection, you can actually gauge how much of, a, how high quality you want. Uh, this is incredibly useful because uh, you know, sometimes if you're having a hard time speaking, you, know, you don't want to use video or you want to have lower grade video, invite people and that's just going to give you the, the link uh, to this meeting. All right, so let's dive into settings now. Uh, settings, so devices, this is your basic devices. Profile, you can have an email. And moderated privileges, you can make sure that when everyone joins, they stay muted. You can mute, mute reaction sounds for everybody. Uh, but as a moderator, you're, you're going to want to enable a lobby, um, especially if you have a meeting or a conference or a networking event and there's going to be a lot of people. Having a lobby can be very useful to screen people and, and let people in one at a time instead of having them all, all join at once. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, Jitsi is not a, not a complicated platform to use, but it does take some getting used to if you're only used to uh, Zoom and the features it provides. Hey guys, so one thing I completely forgot about was telling you how to adjust the permissions in Jitsi. So you can, uh, there's a config file that you can adjust. Uh, by default, you have to have a name and password and I'm gonna show you how you can bypass that. So anyone can join and create a meeting. All right, so you're gonna just navigate to cd uh, slash edc slash prosody slash con dot avail. And you're just going to open up the, um, it's gonna have whatever your domain is. So for us, it's live.cryptoconcierge.consulting, but for you, it's gonna be obviously different. Um, and all you're gonna do is you're just going to scroll down to where you see authentication equals. Uh, and if you see internally hash, what you're gonna do is change that to anonymous. Now, when you we visit the website, anyone should be able to create a meeting. Say you have a networking event or a conference or a large meeting. What you'll notice is you're gonna have a lot of issues 
with uh, making sure that everyone has this like, good connection. Because uh, what's happening is that uh, every time there's more people are added to the Jitsi server, the computational power required to, to run it uh, exponentially increases. And so if you're running just a basic $6 droplet like what we have now, we're going to experience some serious issues. Now to solve that, it's, it's painfully easy. Um, you're just going to go in and completely, completely shut off the server and turn it off. And then we're going to resize it. And this really depends on what, um, on, on your needs. If I'm running a network event, I'd rather go for uh, something that a little bit overkill. Uh, CPU optimize, because uh, the CPU is the thing that uh, gets taxed the most. Um, so, you know, you, you could go for something like, uh, something crazy like 16 CPU, um, virtual CPUs. All right, so you might be looking at this and you see the, the price tag of $336 a month and be like, wow, I, I, that's, that's really expensive for a video conferencing server. Um, but here's the fun part. You only need this for a couple, uh, you know, you only need this for an hour or two or three hours, right? At, at max, it's like a couple bucks, right? Uh, and then once you're done, you know, you can, you can resize it. So when you are testing out your new Jitsi server, just to verify specs, or if you want to see, uh, maybe, maybe you want to gauge to see how, uh, how much resources it's utilizing. There's a great built-in utility to do this. So when you SSH into your Jitsi server, you just run HTOP. And this is gonna show you uh, its utilization. So as you can see, we have uh, 15, I, I, 16th cores isn't showing up, but it's there. Uh, you know, you have the 15 cores, you can see how much each one is utilized. And what's really cool is when you have people start to, to hop on the server, you'll be able to see certain spikes and see how you know the CPU is being, is being utilized. Uh, but yeah, so this is an excellent tool uh, to really like have a very fine grasp. Because you know, so maybe maybe you're running a networking event, right? And it's getting it's getting high, right? But it's not actually creating problems. So you can see that here and then you can go and you know next time you make it a little bit bigger. Or maybe you maybe it was overkill and you can shrink it down. Uh, but anyways, that's just a really neat technique I found for uh, saving cost and while having, a, in my opinion, a much higher quality of an experience for you know, whoever, whoever is attending your meeting. Um, but yeah, so if, if you found any of this stuff interesting, useful, like it, comment, all that fun stuff. Uh, and if you have any questions as far as like is implementation or you have a problem setting it up, just let us know in the comments down below. Always happy to help out and you know enable the proliferation of a free and open source technology like, like this. Anyways, uh, with that said, I'll see you guys in the next video.